Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Ye, Associate Professor of Neurology in Taipei Medical University. Today, my topic is Parkinson's disease and movement disorders, neural rehabilitation for neurodegenerative diseases. The learning objective, including the clinical feature and the management of Parkinson's disease and the common movement disorders, and the neural rehabilitation principles. A neurologist takes care of the stroke patient, epilepsy, headache and pain, and the one part is neurodegenerative disorders including dementia, Parkinson's disease, movement disorders, and some genetic disorder affecting nervous system or functions. There is an increasing number of neurodegenerative diseases in aging population. For example, the Alzheimer's disease increased uh, greatly in aging society. Parkinson's disease following the Alzheimer's disease is the second most common neurodegenerative disease in the elder patient populations. About 0.5 to 1% of the population aged over 65 years increasing to 1-3% to of the population over 80 years of age. The lifetime risk of developing PD is 1.5%. When we uh, approach a neurological patient, we always consider three questions. This is because the nervous system is highly differentiated, highly structured, highly functional, independent structures. Each site has different neurological function. So the first question is what anatomical structure of the nervous system are affected? The second question is what is the nature of the neurological disorder? The third one is what are the most likely etiology for the patient's illness? For the movement disorder, it can occurred in from cortical cortex, basal ganglia, and sometimes peripheral nerves. When we collect uh, the information by history and the neurological examination, we can construct the syndrome, syndromic formulation and the localization of the lesion. The syndromic diagnosis comes Include, include the model of onset and cause and the other medical and demographic data and appropriate lab test can direct the pathological or etiological diagnosis for the patient. The movement disorder patient, there's a very important one is phenomenology means the clinical observation. Detailed history, especially including the family history, medication history, exposure history, are very important. And also the neurological examination, physical examination, identify some associated neurology features, for example, the cognitive function, extraocular movement, and the associated non-neurological features for example, the skin change, spony change, it, those will help to make a correct diagnosis. When the movement disorder occurs only one side, you should consider a structural lesion. And the exposure history can help us to, to find out the acquired condition, for example, the drug induced, toxic. And sometimes autoimmune infectious diseases should be considered. So brain image and the laboratory test sometimes is uh, important for assist your diagnosis. In some patients, especially the young safe movement disorder, some of them are genetic associated. So genetic testing is also important to get a correct diagnosis. The classification of movement disorder, we can, according to the 
the neural neural network structure. The pyramidal track is uh, spasticity, cerebral disorders, the ataxia. The most common movement disorder affect uh, the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia movement disorder consists of two kind of. One is hypokinesia, means positive of movement. The other is hyperkinesia, means excess of movement. This is an example when we see a patient with involuntary movement. At first, uh, we describe the movement is oscillatory or flowing, and uh, the construct phenomenology. For the oscillatory movement, we consider is tremor. The flowing movement we consider is chorea. Then we, according to the history, family history and other laboratory tests or image data, we make a diagnosis of essential tremor or Huntington disease. And we also consider four parts. The first part is voluntariness. It's voluntary movement. It's the movement semi-voluntary. Uh, for example, a kind of acasthesia. Or the movement is involuntary, for example, the myoclonus is a rhythmicity, the rhythmic tremor, a rhythmic dystonia, and the pattern, the stereotype pattern takes non stereotype chorea. And the texture of the movement oscillatory, tremor, jerky, myoclonus, flowing, chorea, sustained movement. Dystonia, ballistic, ballistic. So those can help us to construct and make a phenomenology of the movement disorders. There's a definition of movement disorder. The Parkinsonian is a clinical syndrome with bradykinesia. There's a definite defining features, almost uh, always accompanied by rigidity and often by tremor. The dyskinesia is applied to any involuntary movement. The tremor is a rhythmic involuntary oscillatory movement of a body part. The chorea is a quick, irregular, semi-purpose and predominant distal involuntary movement and flowing. The dystonia is abnormal mo movement characterized by sustained muscle contraction, frequently causing twisting and repetitive movement or abnormal postures. The myoclonus is a brief, involuntary twitch of a muscle or group of muscle. The teeth is an abrupt, jerk, non rhythmic movement or a sound that is temporarily suppressive, supported by willing power. The stereotypy is purposeless movement carried out in a uniform, uniform fashion at the expense of other activity. The Parkinsonian consists of the four part trap, tremor, rigidity, echinacea, and postural instability. This is an example figure for the Parkinson disease, Parkinsonian. You can see the hypomimia face, mask face, drooling, and the cochlear rigidity, pure rolling tremor, and the postural change when the patient walk or standing, and the handwriting is smaller. This is a video showing the patient has resting chamber at the left hand, and this is a rest chamber and the postural chamber at the right hand of this lady. And if you can ask the patient to do the finger tapping or grasping. You can see the slowness of movement is a bradykinesia, or even cannot move a kinesia. So when the patient walk, you can see also you can see the patient the arm swing is decreased on the effect, affected side. And also in advanced Parkinson disease patient, you can see the Postural instability. By putting test, we can 
uh, found the patient cannot keep the even cannot stand uh, st keep the posture stable. This is a, a typical resting chamber, and uh, you can see the left hand resting chamber. So the person Hitler hide his left hand on the back. Parkinson's disease is the second most common neurodegenerative disease. The pathology is dopamine neuron loss in the substantia nigra pars compacta and the Lewy body formation. The Parkinson disease is because the Dr. James Parkinson wrote an essay on shaking passing in 1817. Later on, James Chacot named this disease as using his name as Parkinson's disease. So the loss of 50 to 60% of dopamine neuron can cause the PD motor symptoms. The classical model of basal ganglia motor circuit in PD can be explained by these figures. Those are work by DeLong uh, from the animal study. And the normal condition, uh, the substantia nigra pass compacta send the dopaminergic neuron uh, synapse to innovate the striatum. It activate the D1 receptor and inhibit the D2 receptor. So the D1 receptor is through the direct pathway to modulate the global spaders passing in GPI activity and the D2 receptor through the GPE sesame nucleus to modulate the GPI activity. The summation of the, 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 the effect send the, to the signal to the thalamus, then finally to control the cortical motor activity. When the patient is the substantial nigra pass compactor loss, so the D1 stimulation is decreased, the D2 inhibition also decreased. So the GPI and the, the activity is increased. So it's caused the disinhibition of the thalamus. So the thalamus resulting the hyperinhibition of thalamus to cortical projection. So cause the patient presenting the bradykinesia. And the, in some conditions, when overstimulation the 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 D1 receptor, for example, give uh, some medication, it can cause the the red pathway overactivity, then cause the thalamus high disinhibition, then increase the cortical thalamus cortical activity, then cause the patient has hyperkinesia or dyskinesia. The diagnostic criteria. For Parkinson's disease, we use the uh, NDS clinical diagnostic criteria. If the patient presenting the the Parkinsonian feature, we need to exclude some uh, exclusion criteria, and at least the two supporting criteria. Then we can make a, a clinically a special diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. The supporting criteria including the beneficial response to dopaminergic therapy, rest treatment of one, of one limb, and the pre presence of the levodopa-induced dyskinesia, and the, the some exclusion criteria including, for example, the cerebral abnormality or cerebral ocular motor abnormality, we should consider those patients are not Parkinson's disease, maybe multiple system atrophy, severe type, or severe ataxia. And downward vertical gaze palsy, we consider is super 
Progressive Super Nuclear Policy, PSP. And also the behavior problem, frontal temporal dementia, or early dementia, we may consider the Lewy body dementia or other conditions. And if the patient Parkinsonian restricted to a low limb for more than three years, low body Parkinsonian we may consider is vascular Parkinsonian. And if the the response to uh, levotopa is not good, you you may consider it's not a typical Parkinsonian. So also there's uh, some reflex size, including the if the progression too rapid uh, to especially the gait impairment within five years and uh, some respiratory dysfunction or, or frequent fall in early early stage, those should, cases should be considered not typical Parkinson disease. The typical Parkinson disease, unilateral onset, slowly a progressive, good response to dopaminergic therapy, no atypical features consist of the uh, 60 to 70 percent of the patient presenting the trap Parkinsonian TIP. But there's a uh, another group, the atypical Parkinsonian, including the the Parkinson Plus, NSA, PSP, CBD, DLB, and other secondary cause brain tumor, stroke, encephalitis, hydrocephalus, and the some other heritable degenerative disease, scar, Wilson disease, those can present in uh, like a Parkinson's disease. But the pathology finding is different. The PD is abacinucleine accumulation. Uh, for example, the Alzheimer's is beta amyloid accumulation. For CBD, PSP are tauopathy. The newer image can help us to differentiate the, the typical Parkinsonian. Like the multiple system atrophy, we can see the say bare atrophy over Pong's atrophy, like the hard cross bound sign. And uh, for progressive supernuclear palsy, we can see the atrophy of the big brain, like the penguin, like or hummingbird sign. And the vascular Parkinsonian, we can see the white mat, leukoareosis, and, and the dilated ventricle consists of the normal pressure hydrocephalus and the asymmetry atrophy of the parietal lobe consists in cortical spatial degeneration. For the Parkinson's disease, we also can see the dopamine transporter image. Because the dopamine transport only is placed on the dopamine energy terminals innervating in the striatum. So it's a good marker to see the nigral striatal degeneration. So in the normal, con normal condition, we can see the good uh, uptake of the dopamine transport activity. In the PD patient, is decreased from the from the caudal to rostral part. The pathogenesis of Parkinson's disease is interaction of genetic and environmental factors. For the genetic ones, those on age are younger. For environmental toxin, there's a several hypotheses uh, included. So those two factors cause the normal aging deviated to to early degeneration of the dopaminergic neuron to the threshold for PD, cause then resulting the motor dysfunction. There are several mechanisms uh, postulated, including the ubiquitin proteasome dysfunction dopamine metabolism, acidity and the uh, trace, mitochondria dysfunction, neural inflammation, and uh, some other unknown mechanisms. The familiar PD genes are discovered 
in the in the past the twenty years. There's a more than twenty genes has been identified in those pa in those familial cases. The familial cases in P PD is about ten percent. Some of the genes are also more dominant inherited. Some are also more recessive. But however, there's a some genetic variant has been identified in the past ten years through the GWAS study. The model genetic Parkinson Parkinson's disease is not common. But there's a population of the genetic variant has been identified in sporadic Parkinson's disease patient. Those are highlight the possible molecular mechanism of Parkinson's disease, for example, the Avacinukin and the NAPT and also LAC2 GPA. So the pathogenesis of PD consists of causing gene and the neurotoxin interaction, causing the alpha cellulic aggregation, neurodegeneration, and uh, appear of the symptomatic Parkinson's disease. The environmental toxin can one important and uh, interesting story is MBTB story. This was found by Dr. William Lamston. In in nineteen eighties, there's a, he found that several patients presenting uh, Parkinsonian in the prison. So finally, finally, he found that those patients they 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 took the uh, impure compound uh, because uh, they they want to uh, synthesize the heroin, but the the impurity cause causing the chemical MPTP in the powders. So when MPTP ingested in in the body or in holding the in the in the human, it will cross the blood brain barrier through the NAOB convert to MPP plus. This is uh, uh, very toxic to the mitochondria complex one activity. So resulting finally resulting the dopamine neuron cell death. Does he ever speak to you? The treatment of the, the Parkinson's disease no is dated by the 1960s. It's dopaminergic therapy. This is a, a cinema awakening based on a true story of the encephalitis of the Sajika happened in 1930s. There's a two Nobel Prize. One is uh, Ariel Alvey Carson. He found that dopamine is an important neurotransmitter and uh, is important for Parkinson's disease. And the other is William North. He found that uh, the uh, transform the aerophone from the chem chemical. So nowadays we use medication to treat the uh, Parkinson's disease. Uh, centered by the dopaminergic therapy. We use uh, the level dopa because the uh, dopamine cannot uh, uh, penetrate to, through the blood brain barrier, so we use the pro drug level dopa. Then dopa, do, level dopa will convert to dopamine in the, in the dopaminergic neurons. And the other medication we can act on the dopamine receptors. The other medication, COMT inhibitor and NLP inhibitor, can increase the, the synaptic dopamine uh, concentration and activity. So the pharmacology therapy for Parkinson's disease centers on the dopaminergic therapy. <coughs> However, uh, when we use the levodopa in long terms, 
that is associated with venereal and pictose dyskinesia. This is because the brain dopamine neuron progressive loss following the disease progression. So the disease therapeutic window is gets uh, smaller. When you, you give too much levodopa, it causes the dyskinesia like uh, the Michael J. Fox is an uh, uh, actor, uh, famous actor. He played uh, the Back to the Future. And uh, when the, the drug is not enough, it causes the off symptoms. So it's an off phenomenon and the levodopa induced dyskinesia. Those two are uh, suffering conditions in the advanced stage of Parkinson's disease. The progression of motor and non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease can be shown this in these figures. Uh, in some patients, the non-motor symptoms, for example, the uh, rest period disorder, constipation, hyposmia, can happen before the motor symptom onset. And in the earlier stage, around the, uh, one to seven years, Within seven years, a patient has good control on medication. In the middle stage, the patient gradually have have the motor fluctuation and the sound also steady hypotension, urinary symptom. And in late stage, the patient has frequent fall, dementia, postural problem, gait disorder. The basal ganglia. Uh, the, is the center of the movement. Uh, in Parkinson's disease, there is a change of the, the neurophysiology activity in the the low spatial tenia structure. You can see the GP the, in the normal state. The GP there is a, a rhythmic firing. For the Parkinsonian, is a burst firing pattern. The STN is also the firing pattern is changed. Uh, because of the, the disease. So that's why we can use the uh, deep brain stimulation therapy. We put on the subsamine nucleus or GPI to bypass the, 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 the dopamine and neuron control the pathway. Then we can get uh, the, the, the uh, some uh, re restore the SAMI activity and keep the patient has good motion. motion. So this is uh, our team to follow different stimulation for Parkinson disease, including the neurologist and the neurosurgeon. We have good teamwork. We use the uh, microelectrode recording to the Direct the, the correct uh, position of the subarachnoid and the uh, implant uh, the uh, pulse generator and adjust the, the different uh, parameter to get the good motor control. The hyperkinesia, the hyperkinesia movement has can we can classify according to the uh, fast one or slow ones. The slow one is dystonia acetosis. The fast one, we, we, we then classify by stereotype or non-stereotype. The chorea is non-stereotype. The stereotype, if those are stereotype, we can see is a rhythmic this tremor or non-rhythmic. This can be myoclonus or tics. This is an example of the rest, rest essential tremor. You can see the, the ch ch oscillating movement uh, even can cause uh, the functional, severe functional disability, even holding the cup, the Parkinsonian tremor, and also we can see the intention tremor uh, happened in the severe degeneration. So when we see a patient with tremor, we, we check the affected area, Activation condition is rest, resting state or postural or non go directed movement, and also the frequency of tremor. So the so the tremor can classify.
based on frequency for a low frequency is intention tremor, low to median 3 to 6 hertz can be horn tremor or PD resting tremor, median to high frequency 4 to 12 hertz can be enhanced physiological tremor or essential tremor, and very high frequency greater than 12 hertz can be primary also steady tremor, and variable is psychogenic tremor. For based on the amplitude, we can classify the low amplitude like the enhanced physiological tremor, moderate essential tremor, large amplitude can be Parkinsonian or Holmes tremor. The body part involvement can be head tremor, ET, cervical, cervical dystonia, cerebral degeneration, rarely in Parkinson's disease. Jaw tremor can happen in uh, PD, ET, also steady tremor or hereditary genial spasm. Voice tremor occur in essential tremor. The leg tremor can be happen in PD or also steady tremor. The differential diagnosis tremor also can classify by the resting state or action type. type. And uh, if the resting tremor combined with Parkinsonian, we consider it's a Parkinson's disease or drug related or uh, other neurodegenerative conditions. If the resting tremor without Parkinsonian, uh, it's a central tremor or dystonia tremor or Holmes tremor, we can further classify by the other pictures and the frequency or characteristic findings. The action can can classic action tremor can separate uh, in uh, posture tremor or kinetic tremor. The posture tremor is uh, usually the the enhanced physiological tremor or essential tremor, or can be other dystonic tremor or Parkinson's disease. The kinetic tremor is usually the severe problem or this intoxication or Wilson disease. The management of tremor, including the medical treatment, the, the essential tremor is some, uh, we can start from the propanol uh, beta blocker for essential tremor or some enhanced physical tremor or in some hyperthyroidin ready tremor. Uh, Benodilepin uh, may be may effective and in the, uh, the, uh, in the in treatable cases, we can try the primidone or MPF drug, topirame, gabapentin, or nisamide. In surgical treatment, different patients, when we or uh, uh, NR guide focus has around, can be used for the intractable drug refractory tremor. The jerky movement or involuntary movement, myoclonus is a brief involuntary twitch of muscle or group. It can be the sudden muscle contraction, like left panel is a positive myoclonus, or brief loss of muscle tone. You can see the polymyographic recording this when the patient keep a posture, the sudden loss of ma muscle tone is, looks like a jerk, but it's a negative myoclonus. This can happen in the uh, uh, hepatic or renal problems. The diagnostic algorithm for myoclonus is shown here. It's an anatomical subject, and uh, sometimes electrophysiology testing is helpful for, to clarify the, the, the different type of myoclonus. For example, the the, the preferred myoclonus is uh, the short burst and in the cortical or subcortical ones we may consider the those are uh, medication or toxic agent induced uh, for but for the spinal or peripheral myoclonus we may need a uh, brain uh, spinal core image or peripheral nervous system studies and the the toxic agent we can we we further need the, the laboratory test and brain image to get the final 
diagnosis. Sometimes the myoclonus uh, are genetically associated, progressive myoclonic epilepsy, progressive myoclonic ataxia. Those cases we need to do the genetic testing. So the different uh, subject, subtype of myoclonus, they have some different EHO physiology characteristic. For example, the cortical myoclonus uh, short burst duration usually less than 100 milliseconds. For the subcortical myoclonus, is a uh, heavy duration. For the spinal myoclonus, is a slowly propagation velocity. For the peripheral myoclonus, we see the, the burst duration is less than 50 milliseconds. This is an example of a drug-induced myoclonus in a patient with Alzheimer's disease treated by the Mementin. It's quite common in elderly patients treating with some medication, uh, such as uh, sometimes the anti stamine can also cause the, the generalized myoclonus jerk. With uh, cutaneous stimulation over the back, the popular spinal myoclonus the is a specific uh, stimulus sensitive, and also the, you can see the spreading of the muscle contraction from the past spinal trunk, muscle to the neck, uh, so the SCM muscle or the leg muscle, tibialis anterior muscle. And sometimes uh, we can see the like uh, the patient has a small jerk accompanied with the head muscle atrophy. This is because the motor neuron disease. Motor neuron disease can cause uh, those kind of mini poly myoclonus. The treatment consists of uh, the medication. Uh, sometimes the, uh, we need to uh, use the clonazepam or some anti ap drug, for example, the uh, levotiracetin, valproacid. Uh, sometimes, in some cases of uh, progressive myoclonic ataxia, high dose piracetin should be effect will be effective. The dystonia is sustained movement or uh, wrist. It's an abnormal movement characterized by sustained muscle contraction, causing twisting and repetitive movement of the myoclonus. So this is a generalized dystonia. You can see the affected is the, the head, the neck, chum, limb, and this is a, another example. You can see the uh, whole body involvement. Involve the chunk, chunk. There's a focal dystonia. The, the lady, you can see the, the breakout pattern, or facial dystonia. There's a mage, you can call it, it's also called the mage syndrome. And the, this gentleman, you can see the, the normal contraction of the neck muscle. Causing the, the, the normal neck movement is uh, cervical dystonia. Sometimes uh, the cervical dystonia have the, the sensory trick. When the patient puts uh, his hand uh, on, the, on his face, the dystonia gets better. It's a cold sensory trick. It's a characteristic finding of the the, the dysonia. And sometimes the dysonia happens when the patient do some specific task, for example, like writing or playing instrument. You can see the, the task specific dystonia. Well, the dystonia is hardly to see the 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 new anatomy uh, structural change or new pathology. This is a, is a, a neural pathway problem, network problem. So when we see a patient with uh, dystonia, the history is uh, usually very important. Uh, age onset, uh, the younger age onset, uh, less than 20, 25 to 26 years, we may consider it's genetic related uh, dystonia. And we consider the distribution uh, it's a generalized type. Those are has high, fre 
higher higher possibility of virginity related, and the course course is a uh, acute we consider is a uh, lesion, uh, structural lesion, tossing exposure, or uh, functional pseudo dystonia. The following examination, including the the we can see the the sustained movement, uh, action induced or test specific or the focal segmental distribution and the, the dystonia uh, phenomenology we also also need to to see if the patient sometimes the patient not only one movement disorder the dystonia can associate with myoclonus or parkinsonian or chorea or ataxia those can direct uh, your to that to make a a syndromic diagnosis in different conditions. Sometimes genetic testing is very helpful. So this is a, a consensus classification decision according to the age on party distribution and the, the second tier is a ATRG diagnosis. The monogenetic form of dystonia can be uh, classify according to the isolate dystonia, combined dystonia, or complex syndrome or syndromic dystonia. And sometimes it can be another conditions, uh, other phenotype can be uh, included or neurodevelopmental delay. This is primary isolated dystonia, these two cases. Uh, the left panel is a uh, DYT1 caused by tosin 1A gene deletion and the, set, the, the right panel is a DYT6 is due to the THAP1 mut uh, mutation the, those two are pure dystonia case, cases but the clinical presentation is a little different for the DYT1 they start from the the leg and gradually progress to the trunk. For the DIT6, it affects the upper body and also the the speech. So the phenotype can direct you to make a, a subtenuous genetic diagnosis. This patient, you can see the the sound soul of movement. In at uh, 5 a.m. So the patient has the uh, dystonia, also has the uh, we saw it's a powerful Parkinsonian because by bradykinesia. So at 7 p.m., the symptom get worse, the dystonia get worse, the movement is slower. The patient even cannot walk without assistance. The patient has the the symptom onset with uh, the left foot dystonia at the age of nine. After treatment, the movement gets almost normal. The walking is okay. So the major drug is this case was a, a case of uh, autosomal dominant GTP cyclohydrolase 1 deficiency syndrome caused by. GCH1 mutation. The GCH1 mutation causes the, the uh, synthesis from the tyrosine to dopamine. The efficiency is decreased, so the, the dopamine synthesis is affected in 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 such patient. So we can supply supply the the level dopa to alleviate uh, the symptoms. So it's a very good response to the dose. It's also somatic dominant and the diagonal fluctuation.
sometimes the dysonia can also associate with uh, some jerky movement. You can see the head jerk. The patient has very early onset, 13 years. You can see the hand jerk. And the, the neck is cervical dystonia. And when she writes, uh, there's a uh, but also have the focal dystonia of why when she 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 writing. This case was a uh, uh, DYT eleven caused by the epsilon sarcoglycan gene mutation because it's a micro micros dystonia because the patient has uh, both the dystonia and the micros phenotype phenomenology. The the alpha the uh, sarcoglycan is present in our cell membrane. In the muscle, there's a uh, consist of alpha, beta, gamma, delta. In the brain, there's a uh, beta, delta, zeta, and the epsilon. So the the, the mutation can cause the synaptic dysfunction. From the recent uh, research, they found that in the, uh, the mutation of the, the epsilon uh, DYT patient, you can see the decrease of the calcium uh, signal transduction and uh, change the, the firing rate of the, the, the neuron in the Sebea and also the cortical carbonate neuron and the polyvinergic neuron. So the patient present, can present him with the myoclonus and also the dystonia. And also this patient, this kind of disease has, has uh, uh, interesting conditions called, we call it uh, selective imprinting. Uh, the because uh, we the gene can sometimes can one allele can be uh, uh, inactivated by when 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 transmitted to the offspring. So so DYT eleven patient they have the sometimes they they have they have the gene mutation but there is no symptom. Because of the, the imprinting, sometimes the the movement disorder can happen very shortly. The post paroxysmal attack, and also we have some triggers factor. For example, this patient, uh, young patient, has uh, uh, this kind of movement disorder very shortly, and uh, when she start stand up and or start walking. Uh, the patient has a genetic testing showing the PRT2 mutation. The PRT mutation consists of the, about half of the paroxysmal kinesigenic dyskinesia patient. There is uh, some uh, uh, characteristic finding the male is uh, uh, more than female, age onset around 10 years, the past in family history and uh, uh, usually a uh, good response to uh, oscapalepin, teguitodilentin. In a young patient presenting with movement disorder, so you can see the hand dystonia and also some silly smile. And uh, for this one, this patient, you can see the wind beating tremor. For young patient presenting the movement disorder, always should be checked the uh, seroplasmin because uh, the Wilson disease can presenting with the young onset movement disorder and it is the treatable conditions. The Wilson disease is uh, caused by ATB7B gene mutation. It's an autosomal recessive condition. So if you find a patient uh, with Parkinson with Wilson disease, you should uh, check his, his or her siblings. And the Wilson disease can 
this is a copper deposition in the in the liver and the brain, and also can deposition in the 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 decimal membrane. So is we can see the kind of uh, picture picture of the cancer pressure ring or brain uh, NI change, and the liver you can see the liver cirrhosis, hepatomegaly. The genetic spectrum of wisdom in Taiwan, uh, we have conducted a study uh, several years ago, including the 83 Wilson disease patient. The mutation has by S8, uh, arginine 778 leucine. This is uh, also is uh, highly prevalent in, in the, the Southeast East Asia uh, population, including China, or uh, the Hong Kong and also the Japan. The clinical manifestation of Wilson disease, uh, the young onset is uh, the hepatic uh, form. Uh, it usually happen uh, very early in school age uh, child, children. The 40 to 50 percent are neurological presentation and the 10 to 25 percent presenting with the psychiatry presentation. The neurological uh, symptom for the Wilson disease uh, can present with a dysarthria, gait abnormality, and dystonia like our patient, and this this Parkinsonian, postural tremor, dysphagia, choreostosis, seizure, resting tremor. The diagnosis of Wilson disease, we, there's a uh score for diagnosis of Wilson disease. Uh, there's according to the specific clinical features, KF ring, uh, neuropsychiatric symptoms, contest, uh, past hemolytic anemia, laboratory test, uh, including the urine copper excretion, liver copper quantification, and the serum seropasmic level. And uh, one important, another important thing is the uh, mutation analysis of uh, ATP7B gene. So if the score is greater than four, is a diagnosis uh, of Wilson disease. If uh, the two to three need more investigation, zero to one is not Wilson disease. So the ASLD recommendation for the treatment of Wilson disease, we hope to prevention the the symptom happen or progression. So and but if the patient has uh, acute three to five percent with acute fail, we need to rescue treatment. Sometimes we need to do the liver transplantation. The diagnosis of Wilson disease, we, we need to uh, give the lifelong copper directed therapy. So we, to, we use uh, dipensibamine or zinc to reduce uh, the, the copper uh, ingestion from the, from the food. And uh, also the dietitian has played an important role and some uh, specialist consultation for symptomatic treatment. For the symptomatic Wilson disease, the first line medication is dependencyamine. The second line is trianti. The chelating agent is, uh, is very important for lifelong therapy for Wilson's disease. So the, the neuronal network involved this tonia according to the previous uh, literature, previous studies, this uh, can be uh, uh, increased uh, cortex metabolism, decrease the connectivity, uh, or, or in de reduce the intracortical inhibition, so it's hyperexcitability. And uh, in the basal ganglia, there's uh, some studies showing the increase uh, long-term potentiation and decrease long-term depression. And in global spaders, GPI showing the slow oscillation and reduce the uh, neuronal firing. And the GPE showing the 
DRD uh, availability decrease and response all decrease and the dopamine uh, release also decrease in the striatum and the in Siberian is a there are several studies showing the abnormal firing of uh, and uh, sodium accumulation and alter the severe function. Those another research of cerebral and basal ganglia cortex construct the neuron uh, network alteration in dystonia. The treatment of, for dystonia, uh, there is a three uh, major neurotransmitter system are involved. Uh, Cholinergic interneuron uh, and uh, the second is uh, the uh, dopaminergic system and the third is carbonergic system. So oral medication including the anticholinergic, benzodiazepine, bacopen, dopaminergic agent or dopamine depleting agent, tetrabenadine, those may be effective for some cases uh, for selective patients. For the focal dystonia, Botulinum toxic, neurotoxic injection is recommended for the cervical dystonia, very fast experiment, and the uh, writer's cramp. And for some patients, generalized uh, dystonia or tardive dystonia, deep brain stimulation may be effective for those patients. Overall, the dystonia treatment must be highly customized. Uh, according to the different situation and different condition of the patient. So a dystonia clinical diagnosis it, uh, consists of dystonic posture, dystonic movement, mirror dystonia, and the patient usually have the GST antagonist sensory trick and the overflow phenomenon. The dystonia genetic it can be also more dominant, recessive, as link can be isolated, can be combined, this Parkinsonian microns or other kind of panacea, and the microchondria disorder can present in this dystonia as well. And dystonia neurophysiology, sensory abnormality, basal ganglia cerebellum, male adaptive plasticity, loss inhibition, those are the, the hypothesis of the, the dystonia neurophysiology. Korea. Korea is a hyperkinetic <laughs> disorder characterized by involuntary, <laughs> random, non pattern slowing, and uh, motor inconsistency. We can examine the patient. Uh, we can see the youth maiden grip and the fly catcher target. So the patient cannot hold the, the finger uh, in the, the table holding. Sometimes if you see the patient has one side of the body, the movement disorder occur one side of the body, you should consider the structural lesion. But in in these two patients, uh, when you do the brain CT, you, you cannot see the, the abnormal findings. But for, but for the MRI, you can see the contralateral T1 waste image, high signal intensity in, in the striatum. Uh, those cases are can be seen found in in the hyperglycemic patient. There's a hyperhemicorrhea, hemibarium syndrome, so you have non-ketotic hyperglycemia. So the treatment is uh, the, the sugar control and the, and the some uh, uh, symptomatic anticholinergic treatment. The continent Korea uh, is, is named by the Dr. George Huntington as a child of somatic dominant inheritance movement disorder, early dementia. The child is a genetic uh, cause of the Huntington Korea is uh, uh, the Huntington gene. There's a uh, uh, trinucleotide CHGP abnormal expansion uh, in the anatomy of, of this string, so it's encoded a uh, 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 polyglutamine uh, protein, so it can, you can see the inclusion body in the intraneural inclusion body and the caudate atrophy 
uh, in the Parkinson's uh, disease patient. So if the, the repeat number is greater than 40, the patient has full penetration. But the patient, if the number is between the 36 to 40, is the incomplete penetration. Sometimes, uh, besides the, the movement disorder, you, you should check other conditions. For example, this patient complained of the compiting and also the increase the, the, the quitting kindness. And the birth smear, you can see the, the more than 30% of uh, cancer site. So this is a patient of the McLeod syndrome, it's a newer cancer psychosis patient. It's caused by a, a, a gene mutation in, in the SK gene. The therapeutic option in Korea uh, consists of the pharmacology therapy, uh, such, such as uh, crystallinated dopamine depleter. We made especially the effect is uh, is effective inhibitor, tetrabenadine. The postsynaptic dopamine receptor block sometimes, sometimes has uh, other uh, HRP amido side effect, and other medication, MBIP drug, may be used on selected patients. And specific therapy, for example, the, the, the case of uh, non ketotic hyperglycemia, we should control the blood sugar. For the polycythemia, we need to to have uh, uh, hyperthyroidism can also can cause a chorea. We we should shoot shoot them, and uh, uh, for Wilson disease, we need to couple reducing therapy. So the multidisciplinary approach are uh, uh, required, including the psychiatrist rehabilitation. Uh, genetic counselor, uh, social workers. The, well, for patients with uh, uh, mild and non balanced chorea, we may not need to treat the condition. Clip the tick is a abrupt uh, jerk, non recently movement, or some facial muscles. temporary suppressible, he exhibits uh, maybe simple or complex. So you can see the uh, normal blinking, facial movements, movements snorting, and, and sometimes, uh, sometimes later in the video, head jerk movement uh, is a stereotype, but not rhythmic. Uh, taxia. Uh, for the uh, severe disease, we have uh, uh, can present in the following condition: Danish, Danish is a, a, a pastry like a, a, like a, the severe hem, hemis, hemisphere. Uh, so Danish is consists of the this kinesis means uh, impaired alternative movement. Ataxia, nystagmus, intentional tremor, scaling speech, and hypotonia, Danish. So this is a young patient presenting with a limb and get ataxia, onset at uh, 20. Uh, the patient is a case of uh, spinal severe ataxia type. You can see the dysmetria and the intention tremor. The brain and I can see the severe uh, severe atrophy and the uh, brain stem pontal se severe atrophy. The case is uh, due to the HCA2 gene with uh, the trinuclear repeat expansion, abnormal expansion. Those trinuclear re re repeat expansion disease are uh, not uh, uncommon. The, this includes the uh, the CAG uh, expansion in the uh, axon. Uh, those those things include the uh, polyglutamine protein. Those those diseases can including include the uh, continental disease scar one two three six seven seventeen and the SPNA and the, the Dupla. This is an, another uh, case is, uh, of the spinal cerebral ataxia type 3. It's also a 
trying to type repeat expansion disease. You can see the dysmetria and also you can see the abnormal eye movement and the nystagmus. The CAG repeat for this patient is uh, 2178. Sometimes the, the patient presenting also presenting some jerk like movement besides the, the ataxia. Is a, well, and uh, this can be progressive. Uh, we call it the progressive myoclonic ataxia. Uh, one of these diseases. Uh, is a uh, uh, lysosome storage disorder, cellulitosis, mucolipidosis type 1. This is due to the NEU1 gene mutation. Uh, we have published uh, 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 several uh, families, a few families, uh, they, they, they carry the, the mutation hotspot in the serine 1H2 glycine. It's caused the uh, enzyme activity reduction 1 to 10 percent. The cellulose type 1, besides the, the myoclonus and the toxic symptom, the patient also has the macula cherries spot. Spot 60, you can see the abnormal stiffness of muscle. This uh, spasticity can present in the uh, hereditary form, like the, the patient, you can see the spastic gait. And turn around and come back? Hereditary spastic can you walk one foot in front of the other? No, they, we, they are more than uh, 80 uh, spastic uh, paraplegia gene has been identified. It's the mechanism including the exon transport, vesicle trafficking, organelle stripping, development and myelination, and the mitochondria function, and also lipid metabolism. But some patients presenting with uh, like the spotty pop, plagia, but they have the sun image, uh, leucoencephalopus, leucodystrophy. So this patient, we may consider another uh, type. This is uh, the, the hereditary condition, the family tree is including his, his brother and also the cousin. The, the patient has uh, carried the uh, ABCD1 chemidigus mutation, it's the S-link, uh, as you know, the dystrophy. There's a, a, a famous movie, uh, Lorenzo's Oil. Is a based uh, by the true story. Spread your finger out as much Sometimes the the patient has tremor like this. Uh, when like this, like we you do the polymyography, uh, when the patient do the contractor hand movement, the the tremor frequency changed. So it's consistent over the time with variable amplitude, frequency, or distribution. The tremor also of ceases movement. in her right hand when she's a passing to carry out test. Repetitive so the polymyography recording in functional tremor can have the, the uh, can help to diagnose a patient with functional, uh, formally called uh, psychogenic movement disorder. This is uh, the jerk like movement, but you see the it's a uh, very She's bizarre to sit movement. The tremor also ceases in her right hand when she has longer to carry latency, out. repetitive movements, and a sudden, very different jerk, mainly of her arms, with less involvement. Inconsistent over time with variable amplitude frequency or distribution. The uh, uh, Stanifan and Williams uh, proposed a diagnostic criteria for functional movement disorder in 1988. This documented uh, functional movement disorder consists of a persistent re belief for uh, relief for by uh, physiotherapy, psychotherapy, and uh, some uh, 
a suggestion, a possible treatment. Uh, it's a some other tool, uh, electrophysiology tool. We can differentiate is uh, the the uh, functional psychogenic uh, or the uh, spontaneous involuntary movement. So this is a uh, movement related cortical potential. Uh -huh. Uh, also called the Berosha potentials. The Berosha potential is a uh, two component. Uh, it's associated with movement. This early Berosha potential start bilaterally about three seconds before the movement onset. The later uh, Berosha potential NS0 is seen over the contralateral hemisphere starting about 500 milliseconds before the movement onset. So if the, the so we can use the 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 ENG uh, recording as the, the the finger as a trigger to back average the the, the EEG uh, before the, the the movement onset. So if the movement is a is a voluntary movement, you can see the, the there's a, a movement related cortical potential before the the movement. There's a Berosha potential. You can see the riding. Uh, before the the the, you can see the movement. But if the patient is a spontaneous involuntary movement, you can not see the the movement related cortical potential. So you can differentiate the uh, uh, functional or involuntary movement. So this uh, most movement related cortical potential is also uh, can be used for the brain computer interface. So the diagnostic proof for the uh, movement disorder, if the tremor onset greater than fifty years, we may consider is not uh, is maybe uh, the the tremor dominant PD or dystonic tremor. If the patient besides the the tremor, the patient have some fine movement problem, you should consider is not uh, the only the tremor. Uh, but but the the Parkinson's disease, and uh, if the patient has cold, dusty, blue hand, is autonomic problem, we should consider the multiplicity atrophy. If the patient presenting with uh, visual gaze palsy, gait problem, early early force, uh, you can consider the progressive supranuclear palsy. If the patient presenting with personality disorder, dysarthria, flapping tremor, like. Uh, the, the the video I show you is uh, consider the you know, Wilson disease. You need to check the the cerebral plasma. The patient has chorea, early dementia, autosomal dominant. You know, those you should consider the Huntington disease. If the patient has uh, dystonia, Parkinsonian, diurnal fluctuation, you should consider cigar disease. It's a good very good response to low dose levodopa. If the patient has sudden paroxysmal onset, when the patient moves quickly, you should consider paroxysmal kinesigenic dys dyskinesia. If the patient has uh, motor tic, uh, vocal tics, uh, those are the uh, two rest syndrome. If the patient has spasticity, male, bimetal lesion, you may consider the esting, the general nuclear tissue is our case. Oh. As case I show you. Uh, the patient presenting a consistent or incongruent movement, non-autonomical sensory loss, and uh, the variable amplitude, variable frequency, you should consider is a functional movement disorder. The patient presenting hemichoria with uh, hyperglycemia, you should consider the poor control diabetes. Neural rehabilitation. The, the movement disorder care team, including the uh, multi-professional team, we are uh, patient-centered care. It includes the movement disorder specialist, movement disorder nurse, uh, physical, uh, occupational, speech language therapist, neurosurgical specialist when the patient, for example, uh, the, the, the Parkinson's disease or dystonia loss, those cases are beneficial for the uh, different stimulation. Uh, psychologist, psychiatrist, because the 
sometimes the the patient has psychological impact and uh, stigmatized and the dietitian sometimes uh, for example uh, the western disease you need the dietitian to help to to reduce the copper intake and social worker is, is also important for the, the in the multi-professional team so the main objective for the the patient uh, with movement disorder rehabilitation is the first one is to maintain body structure to optimize the potential for performance and uh, minimize the secondary medical complication the second is to maximize functional skill to facilitate the functional independence and quality of life and reduce the caregiver burden so there's uh, several uh, equipment may be uh, used or applied for treatment uh, this uh, one example is a uh, low extremity uh, bracing this one is uh, the overground body weight support for the, uh, the example, we can use the Parkinson's disease as an example because uh, the Parkinson's disease uh, is more common and, uh, and also is uh, uh, more uh, disturbing conditions. The management of Parkinson's disease consists of uh, symptomatic treatment, pharmacologic therapy, surgery, but the uh, re new rehabilitation is, uh, is important. It consists of a physical therapy, uh, language uh, therapist, and uh, also the occupation uh, therapy. For the physical therapy, there's a six specific core area for for physical therapy in PD: uh, gait, balance and force, postural transfer, manual activities, physical capacity and exercise. The program should be goal based. The Parkinson disease, the model uh, is uh, a little different following the disease progression. In the early stage, the, we need to prevent inactivity, prevent fear of movement or fall, improve physical capacity, and delay onset activity limitation. For the middle stage, you need to maintain or improve activities, transfer with Q, balance training and body posture for the late stage we need to uh, maintain the vital function prevent contracture prevent of pressure sore and supportive care and nurses for patient patients uh, in the advanced stage the patient may have the uh, freezing of gait so the the, the cue sometimes is helpful for for the patient to walk it can be uh, have you can use some device. One is the the auditory cue can use the 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 sound to to guide the walk. Uh, the other is visual cue. You can use uh, the Google glasses uh, to see the the pavement of the the road, like the, the zebra line. Uh, the patient can can walk. Uh, can overcome the, the freezing of gait on the on the outside and the transfer is important uh, the patient has uh, the advanced stage of Parkinson disease the patient has the uh, postural instability so the chair is important the chair should is better to be stable and have the, the handle so when the patient want to plan to stand a uh, at first, the, the, he can move the, the, the center, the, the, the hip, the butt, the buttock to, to a, more, a little anterior, then push up the handle to stand up. Uh, and also the transfer from the bed, uh, you can see like this one, uh, from the side, then the patient can sit and then stand. The switch, switch speech therapy is, uh, uh, sometimes is important, also important in the management of Parkinson's disease uh, because uh, the, the, in the advanced stage the patient might have the 
uh, some dysphonia or dysphagia, dysphagia, anesthesia, luria problem. So the combination you saw this also also a problem uh, in the advanced stage. The the st the speech can be the, the voice quality problem, uh, intensity, and also sometimes articulation. The patient has the monotonic speech and the, the low voice, so it's hardly to to recognize what the patient say. So the some uh, strategy can help the patient to to have uh, to overcome the communication problem. And dysphagia and during osteoarthritis, sometimes also troublesome uh, for the patient dissipation because the sometimes the, the can uh, cause the microaspiration, especially pneumonia uh, or malnutrition problem. And occupational therapy, including the motor aspect, uh, to improve the, the, the upper limb movement or walking ability and stable the, the, the stability when the patient walks and, uh, and uh, reduce the, the possibility of facing of gait. And the cognitive aspect uh, is uh, we can use uh, uh, sometimes the virtual gains or some 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 video can you can uh, improve the patient's uh, cognitive function, uh, uh, especially for the in the advanced stage of Parkinson's disease, the co cognitive decline is uh, also is also accompanied with the motor decline, and the activity of daily living, uh, take baths, uh, toilet, walking. Uh, eating, preparing, dressing, those are uh, also important. And home environment change uh, to avoid the fall, so the environment should be safe and, and not slippery to the floor. And the family caregiver support is also very important for the management of pains and dissipation yeah, to give a good support, including the uh, mental and the physical, those are very important. So the occupation therapy, including those are uh, very important, uh, including the exercise, uh, the uh, practice of the daily life. So the summary, in summary, the clinical approach of movement disorder include the uh, uh, detailed history, uh, including the family history, medications, and the uh, neurological side and phenomenology uh, and the uh, social features. Think of the uh, neuroanatomy, neurophysiology, and uh, sometimes uh, neurophysiological examination may be helpful. And uh, from the diagnosis and differential diagnosis, uh, remember the reflex size, uh, and also some sometimes the therapeutic trials may be effective. Uh, for low dose, the uh, uh, level dopa may be effective for the dopa responsive dystonia. And uh, the neural rehabilitation of movement disorder uh, is a functional uh, improvement and goal directed. So, and also it's uh, individualized and tailor made. So, it's a, a very good and a very important for the care of the movement disorder patients. Uh, besides the, the medical or surgical treatment. Thank you for listening. Any questions?